So today we have more information on 2025 in Europe for Princess. I'm also going to talk to you about your booking confirmation and your embarkation time. If you are sailing on Holland America, when to expect that. We've got updates from on board some of their ships, including how the Starlink is doing on the Discovery Princess. We're going to talk about when Royal Caribbean is going to resume her cruises from China. And then we've got some more information coming in about Cunard, um, what they are doing with etiquette, which sounds really fun. And then also um, a little bit of a follow-up with the dress code on Princess. We've got a lot to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Monday, it's May 15th of 2023. So remember that tonight we're going to do our live. We're planning to start at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We have moved it up an hour to make it um, a little bit more convenient for all of our Let's Go family members who are on the East Coast. So we will do our best to start sharp at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Now, um, the news about Princess. So Princess has announced that to celebrate their 40th anniversary of sailing in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean, they are going to have the Sun Princess and the Star Princess there in the Mediterranean, the Southern Mediterranean in 2025. Now, um, 2025 is a huge year for Princess. Like I said, it's their 40th anniversary of sailing in the Mediterranean, but they are actually going to have six ships sailing in Europe. They're going to have the Majestic Princess, the Sky Princess, the Regal Princess, the Emerald Princess, and then also our new Sun Princess and the Star Princess. So if you um, are not familiar, the Sun Princess is going to start her inaugural sailings February 8th of 2024. Then she will sail in Europe for that um, 2024 summer season. At the end of um, September in 2024, the Sun Princess is heading over to the United States to do sailings in the Caribbean. With this announcement, we find out that then they are going to bring the Sun Princess back to Europe and she will be doing sailings in the Mediterranean and the Star Princess will join her with her inaugural on August 4th of 2025. So it's all very exciting and um, so here's the things that I think you need to know starting on May 25th um, the cruises that will be on the um, Sky Princess the Regal Princess and the Emerald Princess round trip out of Southampton there are going to go on sale um, on May 25th and then on June 1st the sailings for um, the Majestic Princess the Sun Princess and the Star Princess those are going to go on sale. So, you know, be thinking about where you maybe want to go and what ship you want to go on the most and then be ready to jump on those. If any of you would like me to help with that, I am delighted to help. May 26th, we are flying to Seattle to board the Eurodom on the 27th, May 27th for a week. But, um, I've got my plans in place that I will be looking for some cruises for people, cruise tours, lots of things. So if you need help with anything, send me an email and I'm delighted to help. You can send me it in, in advance or you can send it to me that day and I'm delighted to help. Um, really, Europe is my forte. I love Europe. I have cruised there a lot. We're going to go there again in July. Um, really, really excited about that. So here's a few things that I think that you should be aware of um, with this is... Um, Let's see, so the um, cruises are going to go on sale for Elites May 24th and May 31st, and then for everyone else, May 25th and June 1st. Um, the sailing that is going to be on the Star Princess I mentioned the other day, that very first sailing, August 4th, will be a round trip out of Rome, and then after that, it's a nine-day sailing, and then after that, she will be doing nine-day sailings that also go from Trieste in Italy, which is the port. Um, they're really close to Venice. That's the port that they use for that and so so much to look forward to so um, I think that's amazing now the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is um, something really helpful on Princess I think so when you look at your medallion app on your phone or your you know wherever you're looking at it we look at ours on our phone there is something called crew chat and you can use it to ask lots of questions well, we've got a Let's Go family member who just barely um, accidentally left her medallion in her room and then she came back and of course she can't get in because she doesn't have her medallion to unlock the door. She was able to use that crew chat feature on her app 
to talk to them and let them know she was locked out of her room. So next thing you know, along comes a crew member. They did have her go retrieve her medallion in her cabin and come out and show that the picture on the screen there next to the door that you use to, you know, it shows up when you unlock the door to see that it matched her and make sure that it was her. So it's really good they verified it. But I love that that is now an option and I wanted to pass it along because if you're like me, at least once on a cruise, even a princess cruise, I invariably will leave my uh, medallion in the cabin. It is usually when we're going to the pool, so I take off the bracelet that I keep it in, and then I forget to take the medallion with me. So just, I think that's a wonderful, um, a wonderful tool to know about. The other thing to know about is if you lose your medallion, you can go to customer service and they can see where it is because I've done that before and they're like, it's in your cabin somewhere, go find it. And I did, it just helped me to know, keep looking, it's in here. So I um, wanted to make you aware of that. As far as the Discovery Princess goes, since we know that she has Starlink, we are hearing it is going super fast. So the Discovery Princess, I believe, sailed yesterday, um, headed up to Alaska and um, a Let's Go Family member reported today, which is their sea day, that um, the internet is going really fast, working very smoothly makes me really happy and on princess they don't have the difference between like your basic wi-fi and your premium wi-fi if you pay for the wi-fi you get the wi-fi which i think is kind of nice um, another thing i want to make you aware of here is with holland america so holland america is the sh ship um the cruise line that we are going to go on for our Alaska cruise in about a week and a half on the 27th and i just wanted to let you know a few things first of all when you are online in your Mariner account, you can go ahead and go through the check-in process. You can also do the check-in process on your Navigator app. I've done them both ways for this, and I've just kept on doing it, hoping that um, our embarkation time would show up. Well, yesterday morning, our Let's Go family member who is going to be join us, joining us on that cruise sent me a text, and she's like, the embarkation times are there. So I hurried up and went through it, and she got Group A, which, by the way, is 11 o'clock, and we are Group B, which is at 11.20. Along with that, um, when you so once you go through that process on the app, it'll have your little boarding um, pass. But also, because I went on a um, Holland America cruise last year to Alaska, I wanted to let you know that when I went to embark, I had the uh, the um, boarding pass on my app, and I also had printed it out because being my first cruise with Holland America, I wasn't sure what to expect. And I just wanted you to know that as you print your boarding pass, they have down here at the very bottom, see that little barcode? They really wanted to scan it on paper because I had both in my hand and I said, what, you know, which do you want here? They really, really wanted that paper. So I don't know if that has changed this year, and I am sure that she could have used it on my app, but it was really slick. She just scanned it that fast, and I was on my way. So I felt like I wanted to let you know that. And with us being just two weeks out from our cruise, that is when those embarkation times became available for Holland America. I don't know if that varies by cruise, by ship, by destination, um, but that is when ours became available. So if you have a cruise booked on Holland America and you keep not seeing your embarkation time appear, um, it might not show up until you're like two weeks out. So heads up about that. A quick note here about the Regal Princess. Um, I wanted to let you know that we've got Let's Go family members who are who have been sailing on the Regal Princess, and they shared that the food has been excellent on the cruise ship. They have been in club class. And I thought it was kind of a reserve collection. We've called it Club Class Forever, and then Princess renamed it the Reserve Collection. I do think it's because of what is going on with the new Sun Princess and what we will see with the Star Princess. But um, anyway, he shared that the food has been excellent, but they also are serving it on different plates um, to look at to make it look even more appetizing. So those of you who are sailing and you're in that Reserve Collection. Let us know what you think about the new plates. And if you're seeing that on all of the different ships, I thought that was kind of fun. Um, they, um, 
if you are in a suite, you get to have your breakfast in Sabatini's. And um, so they have been enjoying that. They say for dinner for Sabatini's, um, I am hearing that some of the menu options are better than others. And But all of them you seem to receive like a large portion. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It'll be interesting to see if that is adjusted in the future, like really large portions. Um, but it made me happy because some people say that Sabatini's isn't so great anymore. So give us all some feedback in the comments let us know if there are some menu items that you have noticed in Sabatini's that are really much better than others. I really appreciate hearing from you on that. Now Royal Caribbean is going to be sailing from China which I think is remarkable. You know I watch the news and um, it just makes me I think it's awesome that a cruise line is going to be able to cruise from China. So starting in April of 2024, Spectrum of the Seas is going to be going on cruises out of China. Um, she is going to start sailing from Shanghai in April of 2024. And um, late in 2024, Anthem of the Seas is also going to be doing some cruises there in Asia. So first of all, the sailings that the Spectrum of the Seas is going to be doing they are going to be doing a series of cruises that some of them depart from Shanghai, China, and some of them from Hong Kong. And so um, there's going to be four a night, four and five night cruises that are going to go to places um, like including Fuku Fuku Fukuoka, Okinawa, Nagasaki, Osaka, and Tokyo in Japan. So with that announcement, Royal Caribbean said, Our return to China is an exciting milestone that could only be marked with Spectrum of the Seas, which became a household name with Chinese families and travelers alike when it debuted in Shanghai as the latest and greatest Royal Caribbean ship in 2019. You'll remember that um, during COVID, they tried to restart it again. There was a lot. I talked to you all about it back during COVID, but it is really exciting to see that the cruise ships are going to be able to resume those cruises for people that want to go on those. Um, the very first one um, that sailed out of China there from Shanghai was clear back in April of 2019. So it has taken a really long time that's almost five years from when the very first time they sailed out to when the restart is going to be um, it um, there in China now when the anthem of the seas goes it's going to take over it sounds like the cruises that spectrum of the seas has been doing as of late um, and they are going to be sailing out of Singapore that are going to um, they're going to be doing three to nine night cruises um, going to Malaysia Vietnam and Thailand Land. So if any of you have again to visit there and you really like the itineraries that Royal Caribbean does, I just wanted to let you know that that is going to be available. Princess as well, since we talk about Princess here so much, and Celebrity as well, have really amazing itineraries that include your Malaysia, your Thailand, your um, Vietnam, along with Japan and um, some stops in Hong Kong. So I wanted to make you aware of that. Now we need to talk about Viking for just a minute. We've got a Viking, let's go, a Viking um, cruise that is going to be going up through Norway and a Let's Go family member is going to be on it. It's on the uh, Viking Jupiter and it's actually two Let's Go family members together. And what I wanted to let you know is it sounds like air with Viking is a lot like air with with Norwegian that um, you get your flights assigned, you don't really get to change them, and um, they're not always the best flights. And so they were supposed to have a two-day pre-cruise edition to their um, to the actual cruise portion, and they ended up being so late with delays and the not non-desirable flights that Viking gave them that they ended up arriving at 1 a.m. on the very last, um, there's the second day that was supposed to be their extension and so they called and let um, Viking know that they were delayed and so Viking did send someone to the airport to meet them and put them in a taxi to the hotel she said that the Boar's Hotel is very nice they have a very nice breakfast buffet they've met really nice people but due to the flights that they were assigned to, um, as well as some delays that went with them, that they were really late, much later getting there, and they're not able to do all of the things that they were hoping to be able to do. 
Why do I tell you this? Because I just want you to be aware <laughs> um, of that's how sometimes things go. You can have delays on any flights. I do want to add that. That can happen with any flights. But I want to just make sure that you are aware that a lot of times, you know, Viking, Norwegian, some of the other cruise lines will include flights and discounts. They are cheaper, but often you do not get the flights that are the optimal flights. So either um, fly at crazy times um, or they'll be on airlines that have long layovers just a lot of different variables and they can also change them I know that these let's go family members had their flights booked um, that Viking had um, assigned to them and then Viking changed them when it got closer to the time to go so what they were planning on and looked like would be really good flights Viking changed as it got closer to the cruise so just a heads up about that um, I don't know that there's too much you can do about that when you um, book with those offers, but I just feel like you should be aware. Now, this is kind of interesting to me as we have been talking so much about the dress code on Princess here lately. So many of you have shared your experiences and it truly does sound like right now Princess is not enforcing their dress code. I don't know if it's intentionally or if they're just not. I don't know um, if there's been some big um, change in the corporate office that went out or if that's just been the way things are right now. But I wanted to let you know that Cunard, um, a couple of things about this. So first of all, Cunard is having a gentleman on board. His name is Grant Harold, and he was actually in the household of like King Charles III and um, during over at Highgrove, their house in the Cotswolds, and he was there for like nine years, up seven years. And so Cunard has invited them on board so that they can talk about like some of the most common etiquette mistakes, how to make a good first, first impression, as well as what not to do when serving tea. So it's just kind of fun. And he has been on the Queen Mary too, and he is also going to be on the Queen Victoria during the Canary Island voyage in May, followed by being on Queen Elizabeth's Southern Japan voyage, sailing round trip from Tokyo. Just thought you would think that's kind of fun if you are booked on one of those cruises. And so Cunard, it sounds like, is sticking close to what they are known for. The Cunard is known for a lot, but very much for being that traditional, very traditional cruising experience where you dress for dinner every evening and everything is absolutely just, um, it sounds beautiful. Now, we have a Let's Go family member after I've been talking to you about everything going on, which I find a little bit confusing with the Princess Dress Code lately, seeing a lot of um, people dressed, hearing about people not dressed appropriately for the venue that they're in. So I have two things to tell you about that. The first one, and don't miss the second thing because it's probably the most important of all, but we've got Let's Go family members that went ahead and chatted to Princess and said, hey, um, what are you changing here? Because um, um, we're just wondering what's going on. The people chatted back and they were so kind to send me screenshots of the chat. It says there has been no change in our suggested dress code. You should dress for a cruise with Princess the same way you would for any stylish land-based resort. In the main dining room, there are two designations for dress code, smart casual and black tie formal. It says, in the dining room, items such as t-shirts, halter tops, and torn jeans are not permitted and shoes must be worn at all times. And so that is a little bit, so that's what they are asking clearly, but that's not what we're seeing and they are not turning anybody away with that. They went on to talk about um, what we're all very familiar with of what is like on a formal night and what is on a smart casual night. So, um, so clearly um, things are in motion with the princess dress code as they are not being enforced. So here's some things that I was thinking about this weekend. I thought, you know, we all go on a cruise we all come from really different backgrounds we and a lot of different experiences. We would like to think that everyone who comes will do the research and um, be prepared for whatever cruise line that they're going to go on, that they'll pay attention to the dress code, and that they will, um, you know, follow it. But at the same time, I know that sometimes people um, would maybe wear their swim trunks <laughs> to the crooner's lounge, as we heard the other evening with um, Code 4 for Life there on the Royal Princess. Sometimes maybe people do that to be a pill and just to see what will happen. I am thinking that 
probably every once in a while someone does it because they don't know any better. I um, So that is kind of where my thoughts come from today. We're all on the ship together. We want to have a good experience. We want to have the experience that we are looking forward to and why we book a princess cruise, those of us who have cruise with princess often and are very familiar with the dress code we want to have the experience that we spent our money to have and we're looking forward to having on our vacation at the same time i think it's really important that we are kind to people and so if someone was in the crooners lounge and they were there in their swimming suit i personally i wouldn't say anything to them about it and if they came over and sat down next to me i would greet them as kindly as someone who is not who was dressed in more appropriate attire for the Kerner's Lounge because you never know why they're sitting there in their swimming suit. And so I just wanted to say, um, I know that I am speaking to the choir here with our Let's Go family members. You all are amazing people. But it's just a really good reminder to me that how I treat them isn't determined by what they do. It's determined by who I, that is based on who I am. And so if people are doing that, hopefully, uh, if we're nice, I am really hopeful that they will see, you know, how everyone else is dressed and think, you know what, next time, I probably won't wear my swimming suit here. I'll wear an outfit that is that matches more of what I'm seeing here. I don't know if that'll work, but it'll make me feel better about who I am. And I just want to hear what your thoughts are about this. Um, clearly, it sounds like um, people there on the Princess Chat haven't heard that they're no longer enforcing the dress code. But it's just really interesting. And it's fun to hear about everyone's experience on the ship. So keep sharing your experiences, whether it's about the dress code, the internet, what you really enjoy about going on a cruise, whether it's on Princess or Norwegian or Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, any of the cruise lines. We really like to hear and I very much look forward to your updates. And so thank you so very much for letting me know how everything is going. Um, like I said, we're going to do our live tonight. If you haven't subscribed yet, Yep, please do subscribe. We'd love to have you with us. And if you appreciate these updates, please give this video a thumbs up. That actually really does help us an awful lot. And I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.